Look, part of this is the progress we've made with the vaccines. Part of this is the numbers coming down for COVID cases, at least here in the United States. But a huge part of it is just the liquidity that's out there. I mean, that explains a lot of the SPAC craze that we've seen. It explains what we've seen probably in the digital art world. We were just talking about these NFTs and things. And when you look at all of that, Tom, do you feel more comfortable with where we stand today? Do you worry that at some point some of that liquidity gets pulled out from under us? And what, what does that look like? How do you kind of weigh all that? No, I'm, I'm very I'm very nervous. Uh, <laughs> I think it's the proverbial sediment in, in, in the punch bowl, punch bowl. like uh, what are we going to do policy-wise to rein in the, fe you know, the federal debt? You look at both sides of the political spectrum, and the strategy right now is spend, spend, spend. I think if you look at the Republicans for, for a long time, but, but certainly this last administration, we had a Republican president, Republican Senate, and we really weren't doing anything uh, to rein, rein in government spending, to rein in government entitlements. We did a lot, a lot of good things, in particular lowering corporate tax rates that hopefully will, will ensure higher growth in the, in the out years. But there, there really was no voices, you know, kind of the, uh, uh, the bastions of, of conservatism, you know, Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz, so on and so forth, kind of went silent on some of those important issues. So now we have a Democratic administration uh, spending even more money, and, and the Republicans are going to have great difficulty reining that in because they, they look a little bit hypocritical given the track record. So it's hard to see where this ends, but, but ultimately we're going to have to stop spending. Ultimately we're going to have to raise rates. Uh, you know, the party is going to have to slow down for, for a bit. I suspect it will be coming sooner rather than later. Yeah. I what does that mean for SPACs, too? I mean, this is an area that you know so well. You saw SPACs coming very early on. What, what's the market for SPACs right now? What's the, the buzz? Because, as you've mentioned, everybody's got one. Yeah, I hope it rains in SPACs. I mean, it's, it's, become, a, it's become a mania. I mean, there's, there's some really great people out running SPACs. There's also a, 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 a lot of knuckleheads. I mean, it's, you know, when you're in a zero interest rate environment, parking your cash in, in a vehicle where you can get all your money back, uh, if there is no deal, is, is frankly an, an attractive proposition for investors. So w when the SPAC party ends, um, the, the nice thing is that the people who get hurt are really just the sponsors, who are by and large uh, wealthy individuals or corporations who can, fund to, who can afford to fund that, that upfront investment in the SPAC. Uh, so I suspect there will be a pullback. Right now there's something like 400 op open SPACs. There's no way there will be 400 really good deals for investors for, for those 400 SPACs. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think it'll be a good kind of culling or, or a good washing out. The, the thing I'm concerned about is seeing investors get hurt. Um, and there have been some deals where I look at and I just say this, this valuation is completely untethered from financial reality. Uh, or people are really kind of hyping. You're talking about SPACs post deal where they go yeah, public. Yeah, SPACs post deal where they're putting out, you know, five-year projections of a pre-revenue business and the, you know, the, the market somehow is valuing it on 2024, 2025 revenue that may or may, may or may not materialize. And my concern is people will buy into that uh, enthusiasm and ultimately get, get hurt if, if the stocks come, come way off. So that's my really only concern about SPACs is, is that exact sort of situation, really just selling a stock on hope and belief. Um, I'd like to see sponsors be a little more tethered to those projections, uh, hold on to their stock holdings for those projections. For example, I, I tied up most of my sponsor shares on my first back deal for three years, um, very, very much invested in that deal. Um, so that's really the only right. thing I'm worried about. SPAC sponsors getting hurt because they don't find a deal, that's, really not a, that's, not, that's not really something for any of us to worry about. Hey, Tom, uh, on that, that point, and I've thought about this because I know that Gary Gensler, when he gets into the role to run the SEC, I think is going to look hard at the disclosures around this, but also maybe other types of forcing mechanisms. You talked about a three-year hold. If there was a three-year, 36-month hold for all sponsors, for example, how do you think that would change the business? Well... You know, and Andrew, it's good, good to see you. Good morning. You won't be surprised to hear me say I'd like to see the market solve it as, a, as opposed to my old regulator, Gary Gensler, uh, solve it. I do think the market is solving it to some degree. Uh, you saw an article yesterday in the Wall Street Journal about how short sellers are moving into SPACs and they're, they're selling short SPACs post-merger. I think that's a very good thing. Uh, also, investors are becoming slightly more discerning in the, in the last couple months with, with respect to uh, SPAC sponsors. Uh, and sellers are requiring, are being slightly more discerning, asking sellers for longer lockups, reducing the sponsor promote, making, making the vehicle more efficient. That's the sort of fix I would like to see as opposed to kind of a he heavy-handed cudgel uh, or, or hammer. But, but, but with respect to locking up sponsors for a longer period of time, at least on a majority 
uh, of their shares or some meaningful stake of their shares. I, I don't. I, that just strikes me as kind of good, good business practice and good governance. I, I like to know my partners are in it for the long haul. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.